This video is brought to you by Monster Bass. Be sure to check out their latest Black Friday and Cyber Monday specials for some great deals on a subscription service tailored to your region of the country. Click the link below to greatly help out the channel. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Instinct Bass and this is Rob. Hey, there are some awesome deals going on right now during uh, the Black Friday holiday season. Uh, Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Happy holidays. Um, Merry Christmas shortly around the corner. But there's some great deals going on on the Garmin units, especially the 93 SV and the 106 SV. 93 SV is going for right around 650 to 700, possibly less in some places. And the 106 SV right now is right around $1,000, which is less than the typical price of a 93 SV. So if you can snag one of those, grab that. It's a great unit. What I want to do in this video is go over some installation tips that I found helpful. Um, I was the service manager at Track of Marine and Bass Pro Shops for three and a half years and I also self-installed this one on my boat and I've helped a couple other people install theirs. So this is just some lessons learned that, um, that I went through. Hopefully it'll help you out. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe and stay tuned for these tips. Okay, so the first tip is to make sure you use a good quality snake to um, help feed the wires through. This one I picked up from Harbor Freight. I think it was about 10 bucks. Um, honestly, I didn't use this one that much in my installation just because I had a previous unit already on the boat. And that's um, kind of another tip is if you already have a unit on the boat, there's already a transducer wire going back use that one as your snake because it's already ran. So what you're gonna to wanna to do, disconnect that transducer, pull the wire, but don't pull it all the way through, tie you a string or a snake to it, and then use that, tape your new wire to it, pull it back through, it'll be much easier to uh, install that wire. Running the wires is one of the hardest things to, to do when installing these, but you can do it yourself. You don't need to pay somebody, you know, 100 bucks an hour to do it for you. All right, so that's tip number one. Tip number two, make sure you use a good quality hole saw or a Forstner bit in this case to drill your hole. Don't be afraid to drill your hole in the boat. You're gonna to need to do it, it's okay. Just make sure you use a good quality bit. Go slow at first, because you don't want to crack the fiberglass. Um, and just you know, make sure you don't skip on the hole saw. You know, Don't use any kind of other weird weird saw or any kind of weird particular you know thing to to get that hole started or to make that hole for you to run your wires through also make sure that you get the proper size this one's probably a little bit small but i'm using it for demonstration purposes make sure you use the proper size that you're going to be able to feed the wires down you don't want to just put a small hole in run the transducer wire but then not be able to run the power cable or um, you know any of that kind of network cable or that kind of thing and I'm going to see if I can move the camera during this one. The next one is to make sure you use a good clamshell. That is a clamshell right there. Use one of those. Make sure it's stainless steel. You use one of those to cover up the holes like I did here. You can see I drilled the holes, the hole down here with that good, good quality hole saw. And I made sure it was big enough for these three wires. And then I used a clamshell to cover it up. These aren't that expensive, but they can definitely make the job look a lot better. Use one here at the entry point and then another one at the exit point on the back side of the boat. All right, and then the next tip is, and I don't even have an example of one, just make sure you use the correct crimp connector to connect the wires. You know, don't use one of those, you know, twist ones that you use in your house. Um, that'll just get wet and cause all sorts of issues like that. Don't just connect them together and then duct tape them. Um, you can solder them and that's, that's fine, you can do that. But make sure you use the correct crimp connector, you know, connect one end, connect the other end, crimp it together, heat shrink it on, make sure it looks nice and neat. Um, if you're gonna do the job, make sure you do it right. So use those, you know, high quality crimp connectors. Um, I'm gonna leave a link to some of the stuff down below, not all of it, but I'll leave an Amazon link to, to some of the stuff down below. Um, hopefully to help you in your shopping and I'll get a small commission out of anything you buy off of it. Real small, but uh, just something to help the channel out. But just think about that kind of stuff. Um, the next tip is to, when you're connecting your wires, either go straight to the battery um, from your console, straight to the battery, um, or, which is the way I did it and is easier, go directly to the fuse box underneath your console. Um, the connection straight to the battery will be a little bit better. Make sure you use the right wires. Um, your manual will tell you what gauge wires you need if you need to extend the, the wire coming from the, um, the fish finder. So make sure you pay attention to that. 
Um, you probably won't need to extend it. I didn't need to um, if you go to the console. If you're going to install one on the front of the boat, now I went straight to my uh, nav light receptacle, um, but what that causes is for me to get a, an occasional low voltage warning on the fish finder itself. In other words, it's not getting the know, proper amount of voltage sometimes. Um, and you'll get a warning on the fish finder itself saying that, that you have low voltage. Now, I just disabled it because it wasn't causing any issues for me. But just keep that in mind that it could cause issues and it's always better to either run those wires all the way back to the console um, fuse box or better yet, all the way to the battery itself. All right. So just one more thing to keep in mind. I will also say make sure that your fish finder is level with the back of your boat. My boat is in the garage. Um, the motor's back up against the wall, so I'm not going to go all the way back to it. But say this is your transducer here. Yep, there. Um, you want to make sure it's level, you know, this way. Um, because otherwise, when you're reading the, you know, the depth, if it's sitting like this, now it's pointing at an angle. And so it's not going to get it, that cone is coming off at an angle and it's not going to get the proper picture for you. Um, it's natural for it to be, you know, off this way or that way coming from, you know, looking at it from the side of the boat because it's meant to go up and down as, as the waves um, and the turbulence um, permit. But um, you don't want to, but you do, do want to make sure that it's level that way on the, you know, if you're looking directly at the back of the boat. So be sure that that's level. And then one other thing that I just want to mention, because I get this, I used to get this question all the time when I was the Marine lead. And, um, and I get this question a lot on my uh, other YouTube videos as well. One is, um, you know, hey, how do I get the best transducer installation so I get a, a depth reading while I'm at speed? And when I say at speed, I mean like over 20 miles an hour. And what I would say is, one, don't be overly concerned about that. You know, you can geek around all day and, and look for the best actual location for that fish finder. Put a thousand holes in the back of your boat trying to find that perfect location to where you're able to read that fish finder at, you know, 30, 40 miles an hour. But it's just not necessary because if you think about it, that fish finder is in the back of your boat. When you're going at speed, it's reading everything that's behind you already anyway. And when you're at speed, that's just magnified. And so anything that you're reading is going to be way in the back of you anyway. And, you know, it's not like it's a forward facing sonar or something like that, or a, or a FLIR radar <laughs> to where it's going to, you know, allow you to see objects ahead of you before you hit them or anything like that. So just my advice would be, don't be overly concerned about it reading at speed. I think mine reads at about, 25 if I'm lucky and then it'll kind of go away now you can certainly like I said geek around with it and make it where it can read at speed but really it's just not something to be concerned with when you're searching around for structure or fish or anything like that you're typically going to be at idle speeds anyway all right next tip is to make sure you use good stainless steel screws to do your installation with you know, don't use any wood screws or drywall screws or anything crazy like that. These are self-tapping, um, but I don't typically use the self-tapping um, function of the screw when I'm going into fiberglass. Um, or you, you can use it, but make sure you drill a pilot hole first because um, I cracked a little piece of fiberglass on mine. It wasn't anything big. But um, just something to keep in mind. Use self-tapping screws, but do use a pilot hole. Don't make the pilot hole too big, though, because then you will kind of strip it out and you won't get that good bite on it. Um, but good stainless steel self-tapping screws for the installation. Make sure you get the right size, obviously. All right. And finally, I'm going to come around again. And that is to make sure you use a good ram mount. Um, it doesn't have to be a ram mount. A ram ram is a brand, but I do recommend them. They are more expensive, but as you can see, this guy is sturdy. I could pretty much stand on this thing and it wouldn't break. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I mean, it locks down, you know, solid. Um, now I, I can loosen it and move it around if I need to, but this is the, the mount that comes with the unit, by the way. 
and and it goes down onto the ram mount in case you had that question i know some people did that's okay so get a good quality mount you don't want to spend you know a thousand or so dollars or you know 700 in the 93 sv and then skimp on your mount and then have the unit just fly off the boat so make sure you get a good quality mount that's how i installed it there for what it's worth um, now every installation is going to be different but definitely make sure you get a good quality mount um, Bass Pro makes some, some mounts as well. They're a little bit skimpy in my opinion. Um, Kong also makes some good mounts, but my go-to has always just been the actual RAM mount itself. Um, I'll leave a link again to the in the description which of this one, and that will work for the 93SV or the 106SV. So um, like I said, they're a little bit pricier, but I think it's well worth it. I haven't had any issues at all with this one whatsoever. And it's just an insurance kind of insurance policy to where that's just one thing you don't need to worry about. Once you put that on there, it's locked solid. It's not going anywhere. All right. So again, those are some quick tips on how to install these things. Um, you know, I didn't go through a full installation video like that. I think there's several on the web already on that or on YouTube, I should say. Um, these are just some quick tips to think about when you're installing it or, you know, kind of have a checklist to go through before you go to do that installation. If you got any questions at all, be sure to leave a comment down below. Um, if you got any installation questions, let me know. I'll be glad to help you out. Um, if I don't know the answer, I'll be glad to go get it. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe. Check out those links down below. Thanks again for watching. This is Rob Instinct Bassin. Trust your gut and I'll see you on the water.